Hello everybody, Jazzy here, and it's finally time to do this retrospective. I've honestly been mulling over my thoughts for about... I want to say, like... Well, really, since we reached Irithel a while back, I've been thinking about doing this, but... I didn't quite know how to put things into words, so what I did was I wrote out some of my thoughts. I might expand on them a little bit as we go. But I went through each game and scrub through the footage. Oh boy, that was fun. And as I was doing so, I wrote down my thoughts on the matters. So yeah, why don't we start at the beginning? The beginning for me, I mean. So we'll go in the order I played them. So Dark Souls, Demon Souls, Dark Souls 2, Bloodborne, Dark Souls 3. Sound good? All right, let's get started. So, I had Dark Souls for two or three years before I played it. I mentioned this before, but for those who weren't here, I didn't play it because I had heard how hard it was, and I was honestly afraid I was either going to punch a hole through my monitor or be judged for not doing well. Fortunately, neither of those happened. I hit my hand on my desk a couple times, but that was mostly just because I was not really thinking at the time. You know how it goes. So, you know, this kept on for a little while. I got stuck in the Undead Burg. I got salty. You can tell as much by the early episodes. But, like, right after I got to the Capra Demon, I just kind of got into it. I guess the hooks finally sank in or anything. Something like that. I don't remember quite how Dan put it. Eventually, I just wanted to keep going with it. Hence why, at one point, I ended up doing a seven and a half hour session around An Orlando, I think it was. Yeah, that was fun to splice together. I had to split the audio file into, like, six pieces. Guys, just, uh, take frequent breaks. I I'm just putting that out there. Take frequent breaks when you're recording to at least save what you have and then start fresh from there. It'll help you out in the long run. So, anyway, as we went on, I grew to love the challenge, and eventually the game became my mellower, which was good because I kind of needed that at the time. Obviously, the DLC was a bit of a struggle, too, but in the end, it definitely was worthwhile. Like, I look back at it now, I'm like, damn, that was well-crafted. Yeah. In fact, I actually still go back to the game occasionally. I still have to work through the remaster, but when I do, I usually do a soul level one run. Since, you know, Pybro and friends need love, as you could saw, as you could saw, as you could see through my screenshot of the Anorlando Cathedral courtesy of Flybro. I digress. Anyway, the game is definitely one of my favorites, although I understand it's not for everyone. God, if only I had known that sooner. I'm sorry, Tempto. So technically, Demon Souls is the first Soulsborne game. I actually played it second after Dan suggested it before moving on to Dark Souls 2 because of controller changes. And, you know what? It was a good time. A little clunky, but still a lot of fun to run around as Big Roy, derpy as he looked back then. Oh, good times. So the Tower of Latria is still my favorite of the areas. That's the one I honestly think about the most, but that's probably also because it was the one I cleared first, somehow. But then, the Shrine of Storms also fascinates me. I don't know, maybe it's the Shadow People in the Crypt who are controlled by what looks like death. You can kill death in this game. Just pointing that out. Anyway, I also think about Old King Aland a lot. While he's definitely ridiculous with that damned level drain he does, it's still a fun fight. He's basically Ornstein with explosive shockwaves. So, like Phase 2 Ornstein, but with Phase 1's dash, if that makes sense. And... Yeah, the game's got pretty great atmosphere and a simple but effective soundtrack. I mean, especially when you compare it to, say, Dark Souls 3 or Bloodborne. But it complements the gameplay well. It just sucks that the multiplayer servers closed somewhat recently. God, you know, I should replay that. I miss getting Falcon punched by the Dragon God. Falcon! Punch! So, Dark Souls 2. This is widely considered the black sheep of the family from what I've seen. It, a lot of people are on the fence about it, but some people say that it's the best one of the series. 
Personally, I really like it, but I know not everybody's going to agree with me. I can see why people say it's the weakest, but it has a whole lot of interesting ideas like that they explored. You know, focusing on the journey of the individual, both internally and externally, rather than setting out for the sake of the world at large. Frequently throughout the game, you're asked, what do you want? And of course, you know, that's... It, it's just something you don't see a lot in games. Normally it's just, oh, go out and save the world. This was different. Obviously some of the enemy placement was frustrating, especially in the Iron Keep, but there were a lot of great moments and great locales. The game was incredibly trap-happy, though. Quite honestly, I half expected Samuel L. Jackson to pop out of a chest and quote Ezekiel 2517 at me. I wish I could find footage of one of the arrow traps, but I could not, so this one will have to do. Obviously, the boss design was fascinating as well. I know there's a lot of dudes in armor and such, but then you have things like the Dark Lurker and Sin that are just completely out there. And, of course, Suralan, but in order to get to Suralan, you need quite a few other things first. Oh god, that fight is totally worth it, though. If you're gonna pick it up, though, definitely pick up Scholar of the First Sin instead of the original. You'll get all the DLC, and yeah, things will move around, but it's also a little bit more fair. I don't honestly have a basis for comparison, but that's what everything I've read and heard has told me. Oh well. Definitely explore the DLC if you do pick it up, but... For your own sanity, try to save the Iron King crown for last, because just, like, the Fume Knight is... yeah. Although I can punch him to death now. I'm very happy about that. But yeah, it's worth playing at least once if you enjoy the series. I actually had a blast with the magic system, even if Barnabas was super squish. Alright, Bloodborne. You know, this one was actually a blast from the start. I feel like all of our guests added something. You know, like Sammy's fear of centaurs, or her, quote, nom. But that came into play when she saw Ludwig. And, oh god, that was fun. I don't apologize. It took some time to get used to the changes. However, once I realized it was similar to Demon Souls, I was set. Well, at least the hub was. And honestly, Paul's one of my favorite characters made to date. Although that might also be partially because I was being supervised with the character creator, so we didn't have another Big Roy. Oh, uh, good times. I should not be left alone with the character creator. Going with the dex build, though, was really enjoyable. Although, the game does seem really weighted toward that over Strength or Arcane, since you find dex and blood tinge gems pretty much everywhere, but, like, Strength or Arcane? I had trouble locating most of the time. Also, obviously, the Lovecraftian bosses interspersed with other hunters and prominent characters provided a very nice mix of character design, especially with the dungeon bosses. Good god, the Amygdala and the Cursed Dungeon. Oh boy. I wish I could have shown off more of the dungeons on that note, but, I mean, apart from certain bosses, they're, they all play out pretty similarly. You know, maybe you get, like, the different aesthetic in, say, Laran or the Hinter Tombs, but they all... They're all really the same beyond that, and the bosses. Speaking of bosses, though, I gotta say, Lady Maria, definitely a good boss. And I mentioned in the playthrough that I gave a shout-out to Tinakins. I want to do that again, because she actually gave me permission to use some pictures of her Lady Maria cosplay here. So if you want to check her out, uh, I've put a link to her Facebook, Instagram, and Patreon down in the description. Go check her out, see if her stuff's up, to, up your alley. Even though we didn't take down the Orphan of Cost with Paul, I'm glad I got to show what happens after the fight on Jackal. That was... that was a good decision, I think. Just doing all the cleanup in bonus episodes. Good stuff. And you know what? I still stand by the fact that I would gladly buy it again if it ever came to PC. Good times. Oh, Dark Souls 3. This one's actually a tad bittersweet for me. You know, a series you come to love over years of play just comes to an end. I mean, I knew it had to happen eventually, but still, it... I, I went through quite a bit of game limbo. Still kind of there, honestly. Anyway, I found Craig to be a fun and silly character to play with a fair amount of variety just based on this D&D parallel, so being able to use magic but also being dex-based he was a really interesting balance, and 
I just, I wish I could show more of it, you know? Shame that Jackal decided to take a leave of absence the way he did, but, you know, I think Big Roy filled in rather nicely. I also wish I could have gone in totally blind like I did for the others, but such is life, I suppose, you know. Brother-in-law's excited, talks about it. Dan uses the dancer for D&D, &D, which I'm totally fine with. That was fun. I'm not gonna lie, I had a blast when we did that part. But, uh, yeah. Haunt of Sullivan was a struggle, I know that, but I was also kind of careless. I went back in later once I knew what I was doing, I'm like, man, this is actually a really well-made fight. And, yeah, honestly, I can say the same for all of the other bosses I struggled with. Except for maybe Aldrich. Aldrich was a pain. The DLC, though, I mean, it's DLC. It's meant to be an extra challenge. Like, I know Ashes of Ariando was definitely short, but I enjoyed it. And I got a sweet scythe out of it. And, oh, man, the Ring City. I have so much that I could say about that salt, but you know what? The light Roomba dudes definitely compensate for that. And of course, Midir was a struggle, but thanks to Dan K. Meme, we got through it. Although I did finally manage to solo him on New Game Plus, which is what you were seeing at the beginning of the video. Gale was also a good challenge, and you know, had I been more patient, I would have loved to take him down myself. Still, I mean, having Carcass Jack there to distract him and deal damage at the same time was a major help. And, you know, it would have taken a while. I was impatient. And I realize, as I'm saying this, I might have gotten a little too worked up over the end boss. But, I, going back to Dark Souls 2, I think about something Aldia said, and I feel like his anger was justifiable. And I'm sure it was obvious, but I did feel a little burned out at points, but, like, I'm happy to have finished it, but... Also kind of sad that it's over. I don't know what I'm going to do now. So anyway, let's close this out. Overall, I mean, I'm glad I started playing it a couple of years ago when I was between jobs. It was definitely a really nice way to take my mind off of things. I mean, if you're too salty to think about all of the things that are going on in the real world, it's like, you're distracted from them, and as a result, you're kind of in a better mindset? It's a weird way of looking at it, but like, I think the frustration and the desire to move further in the game actually helped me out. In fact, truth be told, From Software themselves really helped me out with this. Well, I mean, not this project, but like, they helped me through a tough time, and as a result, they kind of gave me something to bond with my sister over, because I had her start on this shortly after I did. Yeah, good times. And, I mean, I'm sure some people are wondering, which one's your favorite Dark Souls? Or, which one's your favorite game? And, honestly, I think I'm gonna have to go with Dark Souls 2. I know, like I said, it's divisive, but it really sticks out in my head a lot. Like, I think about it a lot more now than I did when I was playing it, and I kind of want to go back to it again. I don't know, I've done magic, I've done melee, I've actually done melee twice thanks to Streamosaurus Punchim's build. Yeah, you can punch the Fume Knight to death, that was fun, but... Yeah, I don't know what I'd do. I'll have to think about it. Obviously they're all great, but it's just something about Dark Souls 2 resonates with me, whether it's the boss design, or the overarching theme, the philosophical approach that just makes you think, what would you do in this situation? I don't know. That's a good time. And so I want to close this out by addressing Miyazaki directly. And I'm going to apologize if some of my Japanese is a little bad, but I, I, I'm still, I'm learning. I'm actively learning. So, Miyazaki-san, I don't know if you'll ever watch this or if I'll have a chance to tell you in person, but thank you. You've helped me and my sister more than you may ever know. But I do have to ask, why did you put two bonfires so close together? Hey guys, thanks for watching this retrospective. I'm sure it was a little bit clunky, but this is the first time I've ever done one of these things, and it's an experience, let me tell you that. So, 
yeah, if you enjoyed it, give it a like. Comment your own thoughts about Dark Souls just from what you've seen, your own experiences. If you have some fun stories to tell, go for it. I, I want to share with the community. But apart from that, uh, I guess I'll see you guys for the next project, whatever that is. So, yeah. It's been fun, guys. Take care.